Well, welcome back. Um, today, in this discussion, we'll be covering gas condensate reservoirs in Chapter 5 of the text. And if you look at this slide, uh, and remember the discussion that we had in Chapter 1 regarding the various uh, hydrocarbon types, we are at uh, a reservoir that would be uh, with an initial pressure and temperature given by point B on this diagram. And as the diagram says, it's sometimes this type of reservoir is sometimes referred to as a dew point or a retrograde reservoir. And in contrast to the single phase gas reservoirs, if you look at this type of reservoir now, the hydrocarbon, as it is being produced in the reservoir itself, and again, if we follow straight down on the dashed line in a constant temperature process, then we'll be looking at the fluid that's in the reservoir. You can see that it's single phase gas initially, and then as the pressure is uh, decreased during the production, it will reach what's called a dew point on this diagram. And this is why the, re the reservoir is referred to as a retrograde reservoir. And if you think about it, it's, the behavior is the opposite of what you would think would happen. Normally, as you drop the reservoir pressure, you would expect the fluid to turn to gas. But in this case, uh, the fluid turns to liquid. And so, hence the name retrograde uh, for one of the titles of these kind of reservoirs. But as you can see, it reaches the dew point, point B1. Liquid begins to condense in the reservoir. And because the liquid is just in uh, isolated droplets throughout the reservoir, it hasn't reached a concentration where the droplets are connected and so they will remain immobile in the reservoir until typically it reaches a, what we call a critical uh, saturation of about 10 to 15 or 20 percent. Once it reaches that concentration, then the droplets are connected enough and liquid will begin to flow then at that point. But before that point, the liquid remains immobile or the condensate remains immobile in the reservoir. And this is not a good thing because the value of the hydrocarbon is in the liquid. And so what we want is to be able to produce on the surface uh, condensate. And as you can see, in the production process, uh, as, the, as the condensate, the gas condensate comes up through the well bore and through the separator system, the pressure will drop and we and the temperature will drop and we will produce a condensate on the surface and enhance the value then of that hydrocarbon. So we don't want that liquid to condense in the reservoir itself. Now if you notice if we continue to drop the pressure we'll reach a point in the phase diagram in the two-phase part of the diagram point B2 where the liquid begins to revaporize. And at this point, then, um, these drops of liquid that have formed as condensate are beginning to go back into the gas phase. And that's a good thing, because again, we want that uh, condensate to still be in the gas phase until it gets to the surface, and then we produce the liquid. We will talk about this later in one of the example problems as we see the composition changing uh, as we go through an experiment that we'll talk about later. Here is a table showing compositions of different types of hydrocarbons that we produce. And you can see the red circle that I've just put on the slide shows the difference between the gas condensate and a dry gas compositions. You can see that the gas condensate uh, a typical gas condensate uh, hydrocarbon will contain larger fractions of C2 through C6 hydrocarbons. These are the hydrocarbons that 
cause this behavior uh, to be different than uh, a dry gas uh, reservoir. Let's calculate uh, the initial gas in place for a, a gas condensate system. And for this calculation now, uh, we're going to calculate both the volume of dry gas that would be in place and the amount of condensate that we would produce on the surface. I'm going to start with this two-stage separator system that's shown in this diagram. We'll bring the condensate fluid up through our well into our first primary separator. The gas uh, from that will join with the stock tank gas. The liquid off of the primary separator will go into the stock tank and there at standard conditions of 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 14.7 PSIA, uh, we will flash that uh, fluid and we will generate uh, a, a gas and a liquid phase. The average specific gravity of the total well fluid is given in equation 5.1 in this slide, where the values R sub 1 and R sub 3 represent the producing gas oil ratios from the separator and the stock tank. Uh, the specific gravities of the separator and stock tank gases and the specific gravity of the stock tank oil are measured and we will use them then in this equation. And again, we have an expression for the condensate that's formed as it shows up in this expression as well. Let's take a look at example 5.1. shows the use of this equation to calculate the initial gas and oil in place on a per acre foot basis of a gas condensate reservoir. So in example 5.1, we're given the initial data that's presented on this slide. And again, we're going to look at a two-phase separation system. The specific gravity of the oil can be calculated here. The molecular weight of the oil, the R sub 1 and R sub 3s, the producing gas oil ratios, are calculated from the data that are given in the initial problem statement. And then we can calculate then the specific gravity of the well fluid. It turns out to be 0.896. We'll use the information from chapter two to calculate a z-factor, and then we can use that z-factor then in this equation at the bottom of this slide to calculate the total gas in place on a per acre foot basis. Because the volume fraction equals the mole fraction in the gas state, we can calculate the fraction of the total produced gas on the surface from this expression 5.3. And you can see that it turns out to be uh, 0.951 in this example problem. Thus, the initial dry gas in place, we simply multiply 0.951 times our initial wet gas in place to give us what we could expect to have as our initial dry gas in place. We can calculate the initial oil in place then from our uh, R factors and we calculate 95.9 stock tank barrels per acre foot. Because the gas production is 95.1% of the total moles produced, the total daily gas condensate production in MCF is given in this expression on this slide. The total daily reservoir voidage by the gas law then is given by this next equation on this slide. Now we can also calculate uh, the gas deviation factor of the total well fluid uh, from its composition. Uh, in the previous example problem, we calculated it from knowing the uh, specific gravity. But if we know the composition, we can also um, use the information in, from chapter two to calculate the gas deviation factor. Once we calculate the gas deviation factor, the calculations become much the same. Example 5.2 shows the calculation of the initial gas and oil in place for a gas condensate reservoir by an analyzing the composition of the produced fluids. 
again, the calculation is the same as shown in example 5.1, except that we get the z factor a different way.